Well, whilst the eyes of the world are trained on Gaza, there's fear among Ukraine and its allies that its fight against Russia is slipping down the global agenda. Watching all of this closely is Estonia on the front lines of Russian aggression. Prime Minister Kaya Kallas, dubbed the Iron Lady of Europe, met U.S. House Speaker Johnson in Washington this week. Upon her return, she spoke to Christian from the Estonian capital of Tallinn. Prime Minister Kallas, welcome back to the program. Good to be here. Can I ask you whether in, in Estonia, in the Baltic states, you are feeling a little left out? Do you worry that the shift of focus to the Middle East, where there's a raging war, has taken the eye dangerously off the ball of Putin? Well, clearly, uh, the new crisis has taken a lot of attention from all of us. But I think that we can deal with similar, I mean, simultaneous crises at the same time. Uh, we have been doing this before, and we can't have, uh, you know, focus shifted from Ukraine because it's a war going on also in Europe and has uh, much uh, broader consequences for everybody if Putin succeeds. What do you think Americans need to know about doing what you've just said, that Putin should not succeed? And, of course, that's what Biden has said. But in the meantime, you have the new Republican Speaker of the House cutting out aid for Ukraine. You have President Trump reminding audiences that when he was president, he told a head of government, I will not protect you if Russia attacks. You know, the fundamental uh, thing is that everybody uh, thinks... America is the greatest country in the world. Uh, if, uh, you know, America is not uh, supporting Ukraine here, uh, Russia will win, and then uh, America will be second, not the first uh, power. I, I think this is uh, also important. What is at stake here is uh, really fight for freedom. Uh, freedom is the basis of uh, American constitution. It is all what America is about. So, so here we have one country fighting for its freedom, for its right to exist, and on the other side, we have a country that wants to erase this. It's very, very clear. It's very black and white. And America has always been on the right side of, of uh, freedom. So I hope that this is the case right now as well. Can I play a quick soundbite from President Zelensky, who also addressed the issue of, you know, war fatigue or war distraction? If Russia will kill all of us, they will attack NATO countries, and you will send your, your sons and daughters. And it will be, I'm sorry, but the price will be higher. Uh, Prime Minister, he's basically saying that it could drag the U.S. in, finally. This is correct. I mean, uh, uh, when we don't do the right thing now, then the price will be higher. Uh, the price will go up with every hesitation, with every delay. And, uh, I mean, we all want this war to end. We are uh, in a place where, you know, uh, Russia could easily end this war when they realize they made a mistake. They can't win in Ukraine because they can't break the will of Ukrainians and because we are supporting uh, Ukraine uh, uh, with the military aid, with everything um, uh, that is needed. So uh, this tipping point is, is not far if we stick together. If we give in, now, then I'm absolutely uh, sure that the price for all of us, also those who are much further away from, from Russia or Ukraine, uh, the price for all of us will be bigger. You know, your states are frontline states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and you have experienced Soviet invasion and occupation in the not too distant past. What are you doing differently? And do you fear now that Putin might be emboldened, despite what you're saying now, by America being focused on the Middle East and might even try some mischief at some point in your states? Um, not so far. Um, uh, Putin hasn't tried uh, NATO. But saying that if you think uh, past every step that he has taken, the next one has been bolder because the response from the West has been weak. I bring you this example in 2008, uh, Georgia was attacked. In 2014, Crimea was an annexed. And there, you know, Russia was ashamed that it's uh, Russian soldiers because they were afraid of the Western response. But as the response 
response was weak, then the next time it's already bolder. It's like, yes, we're going to attack a neighboring sovereign country and we don't even uh, hide it. Uh, so, so I uh, would guess on the basis of this pattern, then the next step will be even more bolder than that. And yes, it might be also, uh, you know, testing NATO in some way. In NATO, we have the Article 5 that says that attack on one is attack on all. And, and that means we all have a skin in the game. And you have said that you would like to be considered as the next NATO Secretary General. Uh, we know that Stoltenberg is finally going to be retiring. Can you give me some more detail on that? Do you want the job? Why do you want the job? No, uh, I mean, I get this question a lot. And this time uh, the uh, journalist asked, would you like to be considered? Uh, then who, who wouldn't? And at the same time, I mean, I have this uh, uh, frustration uh, in terms of uh, being in these big organizations already uh, 20 years. And I see, you know, we have a lot of good people in Estonia, smart people, uh, very hardworking people. But when it comes to, uh, you know, posts, different posts, then we are not even considered. And, and it's still the Western uh, Western countries and people coming from there. So so uh, would I be offered such a job? It's highly unlikely. Uh, but uh, would I like to be considered? Then, then yes. And I just want to press one more question on this. And do you think it's because, you know, one of your qualifications, apart from all the others you've just said, is that you've actually experienced Russia on your border and, you know, you know, because it's happened in the not too distant past. Uh, well, we know definitely Russia um, because we have been occupied by Russia, not so, not in so distant past. Uh, therefore, we have been right regarding Russia uh, before, and I think we are right uh, regarding Russia now. Do you think there's still stuff about Putin that we don't get? Do you think that the Americans, the Europeans, the global South still doesn't fully understand what you understand about Putin? What we have to keep in mind is that um, it is not the democracy. So as we are uh, used to thinking and seeing things through this democratic lens, then in, in Russia, uh, you know, Kremlin doesn't think that way. They uh, are, uh, you know, he's a dictator and he's thinking like a dictator is thinking. So, uh, so we have to, uh, you know, have awareness of this uh, totally different uh, attitudes uh, towards governing. So we have to keep in mind what is uh, of uh, interest to a dictator, uh, keeping the cronies around him happy, that means the oligarchs, and keeping the power structures, the army, happy, uh, because they keep in, uh, him in, in power and make the deeds that he wants them to make. So uh, I think in terms of those two elements, uh, there are uh, oligarchs who are not happy because we are uh, sanctioning their property and, and already talking about uh, using that property for the benefit of uh, reparations in Ukraine. And uh, regarding army, as I was saying, uh, the Prigozhin mutiny showed that the army is not happy. Why I'm saying this is that I still feel that the tipping point might not be that far. Well, that's provocative uh, thought, food for thought. How long do you think this war will last? Well, it's it's hard to tell. At the same time, I don't want to uh, I don't want to give expectations that it's going to end uh, very very soon. But if you think about you know uh, Russia's um, military operation in Afghanistan, then uh, they were there for ten years. If you think about Ukraine, they uh, you know started uh, already 2014. So next year it will be ten years. Maybe uh, then is the time when they realize they made a mistake and they can't win there. Really fascinating, Prime Minister Kaya Kallas. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All the best.